reminder, we will, um, the meeting is being recorded and it's available for broadcast on YouTube and mm -hmm. the city's YouTube channel. So just word of advice. Um, public comment. We don't have any public here other than. <laughs> Do we have any public comment online or anything like that? No, I did not receive any. Um, so before the call, we have a, a new insert into our agenda. We do. Uh, it's number three. You probably haven't seen it. It's Senator Cantwell's Congressional Directed Spending Request update. So, Blaine, is that your? Yeah, topic? that's mine. Okay. This is the happy news. This is happy news. Yes. I, like, I like happy news. <laughs> so uh, we were contacted by Senator Cantwell's office. Um, a lot of cities spend a lot of money for to get spending congressional uh, spending request, uh, congressional directed spending request, aka earmarks, mm -hmm. are, are back, and we were able to get two million dollars through Larson's office last year for sewer. I and I and flow infiltration project. And so this year, uh, Cantwell's uh, contacted us, uh, spoke with Cameron this morning, pitched about 10 ideas. And the only idea he liked was $5 million with a 75 25 match uh, for the marina. So we are in the process of doing the application. It's due Friday. They don't give us a lot of time for these. Uh, we didn't even get a plan B. We were hoping to get a plan B, but we, all these ideas, we had about 10 ideas. We pitched at them, and certainly this, like I said, this has been on the list. Say him. Yeah, Maria Cameron. Yeah, it's Cameron. Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the, he's the, the legislative aide. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Which you work with. Great guy. Yeah, and uh, so he was very open. He had his staff from D.C., so we did it at 9 o'clock this morning. And so, He's never here. He, was, he, was he in D.C.? Uh, he was here. He was here? Yeah. In the state of Washington? Well, we just did a Zoom call, um, or actually Teams, I think is what we use, the Zoom uh, oh. Teams call, and he had the two people, uh, Patrick and, let me get the lady's name, uh, from D.C., and we just vetted all these ideas. Uh, so they recommend we go forward with it. As part of the process, it requires letters of support. So Ooh, we're asking yeah. for a letter of support from the Marine Advisory, uh, the Yacht Club, the EDC of Island County, uh, for Island County, and uh, Jill Johnson are the four we identified that we're going to work on this week. Chris have already been very active and, and wrote <laughs> how to write uh, two uh, letters of support, uh, one from the Marine Advisory Commission and one from the uh, uh, from the Yacht Club uh, job, supporting man. that uh, congressional um, directed spending uh, request there. So now, uh, these have to be shovel ready kinds of projects or what? They have to be, but you're going to be. Yeah. yeah. Be. I mean, we're already working on the planning yeah. and that's yeah. the beautiful yeah. thing of this goes into their 24 um, budget cycle. Have you heard this before? So it's a long process. Um, but we did a similar thing with Larson's and it, it finally got funded and we got the $2 million. Now we're waiting to figure out all the red tape that goes with it. And so, yeah. but it'll come and this will come the same way and the timing will be really good. Um, so, I mean, we should know, uh, I don't know the time frame, but it could be up to a year. They don't always pass the budget on time. So, I don't want to uh, look a gift horse and not what was, yes. what was the pitch? What was the ask? For the, for the five million, or for dredging. For dredging. Oh, okay. For dredging, we actually talked about other improvements of a million, uh, another million dollars. We talked about the channel dredging for, uh, for five million, but that won't be ready for some time. And we talked about the breakwater. Um, and then I talked about a lot of other ideas. I don't need to get into other interests that the city had and. Uh, and uh, so they really liked and, and, and encouraged and said they would support uh, the city applying for this congressional directed spending um, request for the <laughs> marina. Um, so they liked the $4 million level. So we do the $5 million project with a 75-25 match, which is right around the, the sweet spot of, of $4 million. They don't go over too much. 
that puts them on the high side and they fund stuff a lot less. Um, it's a long shot through, I mean, it's a long process through, but uh, being on there, um, the city hasn't had a lot of requests uh, in the past. And like I said, uh, the, the, uh, the county is, I mean, they're paying a consultant to do this kind of work uh, for them uh, to do these kind of requests. And so we were able to, with our, our um, grants administrator to really work on this, be more aggressive with it. And she's writing the, uh, she'll, she's got enough information. She'll work with Chris and Brian if she needs any additional spending off that. But I thought it was great news to hear. Uh, and then need uh, just the uh, support. Uh, the timing is, is yeah. kind of when you, well, it is 2024 is an election year for her, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and uh, sure. And she's not the most well-respected senator we've ever had but we've never the republicans have never had anybody really to run against her and i don't think they will this time either so it's pretty exciting you know the timing's perfect this yeah. is a long process is, yeah. yeah but the dredge is a long process yeah so yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So what's what's the go dark date there's usually a used by a it, we don't know all the details until they do okay. it i know the two million dollar yeah, one that we have for the for the wastewater um, fund, we don't have the detail yet. So it takes a couple of months for the detail to even to come out. Uh, eventually it rolls out through the bureaucracy and, and we'll so get a call from somebody from, you know, asking us, and this will probably be through Army Corps and they like the fact and they work with the Army Corps. And so this really was one of the things that Wouldn't they- that great. Mm -hmm. Have the Corps on site here. Yeah. We just smooth them to uh, work their way out the out the channel. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's the other <laughs> on your way out. On your way out, just <laughs> take a little bit with you. Well, I, I'm also going to the Pentagon, and we're including uh, a visit to the Army Corps. So I'm going to start the discussion on the dredging, mm -hmm. on the breakwater, and on the um, the channel. Bridge. The channel dredging. So, uh, you know, we're going to go forward with the dredging <coughs> for the marina, but we really need the breakwater and we really need the, the channel. Uh, yeah, and I know that, you, you know, your presentation looking for 30 to $40 million, <coughs> you know, this is $5 million is, in the door. So, I mean, really good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so uh, this is just a possibility. Just a little bit yeah. Yeah. Just a little so, this is a huge then, burden yeah, on the bar. Uh, uh, you've already sure. drafted a letter of support from this committee. Yes. So, we need to. Uh, the approve it or so I would recommend a motion uh, to authorize the chair to sign a letter of support for the uh, you know I got I got to tell you I, I fully support the Sago Carver congressional directed spending request of 4.125 million for dredging due to tides currents and stuff and lack of natural protection it's important uh, as a mayor and city council concerning the matters uh, not sure what that's saying, but anyway, Dredge Marine has a top priority. Uh, as an enterprise fund, it's not subsidized by general funds or tax revenues from the city, but I thought solvent sort of marine is vital economic driver as well. Yeah, and asking for their consideration and approval. So, sounds like a, a good letter, it covers the subject, and doesn't embarrass any of us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Blaine, did this just come out of the blue from Campbell's office? Nobody in the city was working on this or Oh, we've been working on these for a while. Oh. I mean they they kind of they don't give you a lot of turnaround. They send you a letter and and uh and say, okay, you gotta give us that. so they gave us a top five, uh we gave them about a month ago, a top five. And I then, see. Okay. And then they kind of threw all these red tapes at you and all this stuff, and I said, Well, let's it works better if you just kind of meet with them verbally, kind of go through with it, and then you can work through all the uh, red tape and they can kind of pick the items that they want. And that's how we got the Larson one. We pitched about uh, five ideas when Larson kind of mm -hmm. came to us. I think in the future, we're gonna get better at knowing and looking for these as part of our grant and asking them for uh, their discretionary um, funding and make sure we get in and get in that. We haven't done that in the past, but as we get more savvy here, our goal was to be more savvy yeah, on just, grants. And so we're gonna get more savvy on it and, and uh, we'll do what uh, 
consultants do for a lot of cities, and they pay $3,500 a month, I believe some of those run for a, a, a consultant lobbyist who, who uh, basically uh, goes through and, and figures out a priority and puts it in there. So, um, and honestly, this is a lot more exciting than the county's request that I know that they're doing doing here and a lot more money. So, uh, so uh, I think yeah. it's a great great proposal here, great yeah. for our uh, community here. So. I need a, a motion from the committee that we so be authorizing me to sign the letter of support for the uh, congressionally directed spending request. Of All right. All so yeah, yeah, I'll second it. Okay. All of the favor. Aye. Aye. Good. Do we need multiple pens? And you know, it's a, it's a real treat to have someone actually from the city, name, right? Blaine, who actually understands that we have a channel and that needs yeah, to be yeah. 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 And all of this stuff, you're probably the only person yeah. since I've been sitting on this committee from the city, other than Chris, who really understands what we're up against. And thank you. Thank you. I listened to Chris. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we did the boat yard from listening yeah. to Chris, and we've done a lot of great things. And yeah. Okay, very good. Kind of like skipped that. over the review of meeting notes yes. from the February February sixth meeting. The notes look good. Any yeah. Corrections or additions yeah. to the to the meetings from our February sixth meeting. Move we accept. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to accept the minutes as submitted. Aye. 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 Everybody's aye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving right along. Um, we we'll get back to the original agenda, which is hearing from Paul Sorensen about the uh, information on the rate survey. Oh, we're underway. Yes, I've collected uh, all of the raw data right now from, uh, let's see, Bellingham, Blaine, uh, LaConnor, Anacortes, Marina, Cap Sandy, San Juan, uh, Friday Harbor, Winslow Wharf, um, we've got Kingston, uh, and we've got Denver and Edmonds, uh, Shilshul Bay, Elliott Bay, and Des Moines. Did you mention Brownsville? Didn't mention Brownsville. Okay. That's pretty small. Well, but it's, yeah, yeah, but it's it's kind of it's rural in. Um, I don't want to say it's like Oak Harbor, but it's rural in the fact that there's not much, there's not there's no shoreside activities there in Brownsville. Yeah. That would be something to think about. Yeah, um, I have a question because some of the places that you name are, are poor districts and so forth. So they also get tax revenues. Um, is there any consistent multiplier or whatever that we can add as, you know, just a figure for a typical contribution from a port district? You know, does the, the people, if, if we're looking at a $500 slip and there is $2,500 worth of Tax revenue, five hundred dollars worth of tax revenue coming in through other means through property taxes. Yeah, uh, they, they were, we there were that adjustment in the uh, comparison, so that we're comparing apples and apples. They're they're in the same situation as the city, and that they pay leasehold tax in lieu of property taxes. It's the private, yeah. It's well, that's twelve and a half percent. Yeah, but not all of that comes back to the city or to the port. A lot of it goes to the state and the yeah. chunk of it comes back. Well, they, pretty, it's pretty similar there. The only difference would be for the private marinas and they're paying straight property taxes. Yeah, and they have a profit motive, so they you know, should typically be charging more of them. But I think because we're essentially a nonprofit. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh well, yeah. So so what you were asking, I'm just trying to understand. So like let's say it costs Five hundred dollars for this slip to maintain or whatever. That's our cost. Um, and it's a port district. I'm talking about the rate. Right or or whatever. Right. Yeah. So there there's a cost associated with each slip. Right. You take all the slips that we have and that's how much it costs for the marina. Right. So you're saying like us as an enterprise fund, 100 percent of that cost is covered by the tenants. 
Whereas yeah. how much, what percentage of that yeah, it's overall actually, it's cost is coming from the, the port district? Yeah, you're, you're Does that make it. sense? Yeah, yeah, you're getting it, but it's on the revenue side. Okay. You know, if, if we're charging $500 for a slip and somebody else can charge four ninety five dollars because they're getting 25 bucks or for more this, from, 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 from the yeah, right, tax rate. Right. No, I don't know no, it, it works doesn't work like that. that way. Well, I know it, it, it probably doesn't, but but it is different. I mean, you could probably look at it, and Chris might have. You could actually say, as Ryan was alluding to, the cost of doing business. What does yeah. each slip cost the marina to, to maintain? You could do it that way. It, it's a tough one, but I mean, there is probably a way you, you could advertise well, that. You could say, yeah, you would want to do it by foot. Yeah, you could do sure, it by sure, sure. Yeah. You know, and, and you could do that, but I'm not sure that's a good way to, to no. do it. I don't think it tells you anything. It might, but you know. So, so are you figuring, are you trying to figure out how much the tax levy yeah. subsidizes the actual? It contributes to or subsidizes it. The actual, subsidizes it the actual rate. Mm -hmm. um, they used because, to do multiple lines of business, and that's where it comes to play. I know when I first talked to the uh, director, uh, executive director at Anna Cordes. Uh, good discussion with him. We talked about airport, not the yeah. marina, because that was more relevant at the time. And first thing yeah. he tells me is, well, it's it's uh, six percent of our revenue, our of our expenses, and three percent of our revenue. Yeah. Well, how do they do that? They, yeah. Yeah. they make that work because they have other lines of business, and they also have the, subsidies. And they, yeah, and they also have. Uh, uh, a minimum levy rate that they can uh, assess to. Yeah, and I'm for, just thinking about the levy rate. It's a tough one to. I mean, you it'd, could, be, it'd be tough to figure yeah. that out from the individual point. We've worked with a lot of them, financial plans for them. And typically, they're trying to pay for all of the expenses uh, by the mortgage rate. And then we try and get them to think about um, what the capital is that's coming up and have a reserve fund in some way for funding the rest of it. Now, right. you, um, when you look at major improvements, if they're not through grants, uh, then it's a geo bond and it'd be a similar vehicle, geo bond or revenue bond through the ports. So it's pretty similar that way. I wouldn't think that would make the difference. Okay. Where I think really what I'm trying to look at is what does the tenant pay? What's the all-in cost? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you guys are pretty straightforward about how you charge for for mortgage, and you've got the dredge fee, and you show that's on top of it, and it's got tax yeah, associated yeah. with it. In yeah, other exactly. ports, you've got environmental fees and utility fees and tribal fees. It just depends on the individual location, and those are all added in. Mm -hmm. So we try to make sure that we captured all of those. So it's really apples with apples. We we have utilities as well. Just just to be clear. Electric, but a electric, separate, electric. a separate, yeah, no, this is a separate, separate utility fee. Right. In, oh, know, a separate in, utility. In Tacoma, they have a $30 a month fee at, uh, at some of the marinas to cover garbage and, mm -hmm. and um, other uh, uses of, uh, of, of utilities. You mentioned a tribal fee. Is that a contribution from the tribe? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is Elliott Bay Marina. <laughs> <laughs> and when they built it, the Elliott Bay Marina, so many years they've got several years left but since 1989 they've been getting a certain percentage of the gross revenues so wow. so that all then fits into it's a small component of the overall marine it's charge, almost like a it, utility tax is what it is it's a tribal utility yeah, tax yeah mm -hmm. what it is a tribal yeah property tax right. property tax yeah yeah, yeah. So we, we've got that down now, and uh, we, we've been looking at it. So that some of that was helpful in looking at Mariner's Haven because we've been looking at uh, dry storage rates, shed space, mm -hmm. parking spaces, um, all of those kinds of uh, uses as well. Um, and then for Mariner's Haven, of course, we looked at um, boat haul outs and washdowns and all of those sorts of things. But it's coming along. I, I figure probably two, three weeks we'll have a summary for you we can go through okay just just to summarize this issue um all in there's probably not a significant difference between a port district and the rates they charge for march versus what we charge for march is that what is that a fair i I, I would say that um all in means that uh 
you, you've got a rate that's a similar build up to theirs. Uh, but for the most part, I think your rates are low relative to what the other ones yeah. are. And we're looking at it on the square foot basis as well, uh, in terms of small boats versus large boats, the square footage of the water area that's leased. So uh, we're looking at it from that perspective as well. Okay. I think that it, just along those same lines that, you know, when you looked at the green occupancy report for this month, I mean, I think it was 69 or 70 empty slips and the majority of them, it just really, really highlights the fact that we have the wrong mix of slips. And, and it's just yeah. amazing yeah. How, how it just jumps off the page yeah. at you when you look at it right now. Yeah. And even in the high season, it's still, yeah. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. It's not as hard. We just put, we, we, so we're talking specifically about the 28 foot category. Yeah. We don't get 28 foot boats in the summer. Right. We're putting 24s and whatever right. we can, we'll fit it just yeah. overflows yeah. into that area. So yeah, it, it is drunk. One, one question, Paul, is as we move towards this, we have the dredge fee increase on the books yes. ready to go. Um, is, is that playing, a, is that playing a, a part into your equations as well, knowing that that's going to go up uh, by approximately, what is it, 30 cents, 40 cents? 38 cents. Yeah. 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 What you put in the past is you... On my bill this month. No, it, it has not changed yet. And the, the, our, our tenants, we did that survey, said they want it all at once. But if, if this goes much farther, then we'll have to, to enact it, definitely. What, what you have done before is you've done a dollar per foot, and you've applied that to all length sizes. Mm -hmm. I think it ought to be lower for the smaller boats and higher for the bigger boats. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to even, and that again gets to that square footage rate. Right. And we haven't run those numbers yet, but right. uh, we'll run them. <clears throat> Typically, when we do that, uh, we look at all of your operating costs, uh, how much of that's associated to mortgage, the, the percentage of it, and then we look at uh, an annualized number for capital improvements, including the dredging uh, mm -hmm. cost, mm -hmm. and then come up with a rate. And we used to be able to get a number that was somewhere close to what the market is. Uh, but typically now it's higher just because of what's happened with construction costs. Mm -hmm. So we kind of take that as an idealized look at these are the rates that you ought to be charging, but then the market conditions don't allow you to do that. So then it's kind of stepping into the, the next series of rates. That, that's how we take a look at it. And then all of this will culminate with us at a city council meeting, making a recommend, asking for... Um, we, we'll need to make a recommendation. Well, yeah, we'll make council. the recommendation to the council and then get authorization yeah, to go. Yeah, 38 cents a foot that I mentioned is the plan, one of the plans that we looked at, mm -hmm. you know, years ago mm -hmm. when they were refining mm -hmm. the bonds. Um, that was the increment that was recommended so that it was mm -hmm. at least a break even. With the, right. Uh, right. But it sounds like that 38 cents might change now based upon his findings. So. Right. And also when you do the dredging study. Yeah. 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 But then having some money is going to help with that as well. Right. But Always we should foresee this. We're not getting the money. Though. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for now. Yeah, we can always circle back. Okay. No problem. Is that? Yep, that wraps it up. Okay. We're, on, we're underway. All right. Uh, the, uh, you, you mentioned briefly the uh, boat yard. You're working on a business plan for the boatyard as well? Yes. Okay. And what stage are we in there? We're, we're going to just talk about that in the executive session. Okay. Uh, we are going to have an executive session late in the agenda and probably not reconvene. So that will end. Yeah. As we go into executive session, it will end the recording phase of the yeah. thing. And that's allowed under the revised Code of Washington section, whatever, uh, because we're talking about acquisition of real estate. So, okay. Uh, any questions or concerns about that matter? So, ex acquisition of real estate related to price. Yes. We have to make sure we get that component in there. Yeah. Um, all right. General Marina update. Yeah, just a, a couple of quick things. Um, super excited. The we had an issue with our gas and diesel lines underneath the launch ramp of all places. Mm -hmm. So we had a company come out and fix that and we'll be reopening the launch ramp tomorrow. We had to wait for the cement to cure. 
but we're fully operational and it was just so amazing that we got that fixed so fast that everything just signed up Pacific Environmental was available. They had most of parts in their warehouse. And uh, so they came and took care of that. So uh, uh, Chris, last month you said we wouldn't have to dig Big no, we thought we, we uh, thought that was the case. Yeah. We thought that but was the case. That wasn't when, what happened. When they pulled the old pipes out, uh -huh. they noticed that they were muddy and wet and inside inside the conduit. Oh, okay. So okay. the conduit had caved in, yeah. and they tried to push the new pipes through, but couldn't get through. So that's why they had to cut the conduit. So do we have any uh, idea what the cost? It's going to be roughly eighty thousand dollars for all that. Yeah. There's. I asked him if there was a wireless delivery model, and they said no. You're <laughs> talking the gas. Line? The gas and diesel yeah. lines, because they had to cut the ramp. But did you say the ramp was done too? No, no, just the they had to cut the ramp. Oh, okay. With lives. Uh, so, so the, the boat the tanks are on the, the south side. side. The dock is still on the south side. No, right. so the that's right. my next one. I'm getting confused. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was looking. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, out of curiosity, what was the depth of the concrete? Yeah, yeah, right. It was deep. Yeah. I didn't measure it, but it was deep. And that was a, that was <laughs> a second government. Yeah, yeah. 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 It would yeah. just keep pouring until they ran out of concrete. Yeah. I think that uh, they had to bring two, two dump two cement trucks yeah. to fill the hole. Yeah. All right, fabulous, thank you. Uh, just yeah, as an example, that that eats up one year's worth of even prop, not not just prop, yeah. but uh, the amount that we can put away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no, from the gasoline sales. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. we, we get 15% of our gasoline right. sales, not including the staff time, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. That's a tough one to swallow, but yeah. we didn't have a choice. Yeah, and that's an area that I think we're going to be surprised about. You know, yeah. Uh, well, it, it, it pained me to have to do that, actually. Yeah. But what, there was just absolutely was no other way to do it. We what's going on with the price of fuel? Are you seeing any decrease in, in, what, we, in what you buy? If I watch it daily. I get an update every day, and it seems like it is dropping a little bit, but then all of a sudden it'll jump back up. It's not consistent. Usually, what I'll see is consistency, you know, depending upon the time of the year. This time of year, there's usually a bit of a drop, and then there's consistency and a rise till Memorial Day, and then it drops a little bit, yeah. and then it goes up just before the 4th and drops and goes up again before the What end. were you paying for diesel uh, if you bought today? What was, do you remember what it was? I don't remember what it okay. was. Okay, no. No, we're at 493 for diesel, and I think that's a little bit high for the surrounding areas. Other yeah. marinas may have bought it after we did at a low point, but it's just one of those things that I try and measure, but it's really tough. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I don't know, especially this time of year when we're not using yeah. a lot of right. right, right, right. We have to wait until the tanks go down before we right. justify a delivery. Yeah, I can't, I mean, I conceivably could buy one gallon and then change the price, but I don't think that'd be good for the mm -hmm. marinas. And of course, was advertising a lower price, but I don't, don't no remember tax. if that had no tax. No tax. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the hard part is the apples and oranges. Yeah. Comparisons. Um, launch ramp, the float. Talking to them, this is the same company doing the Keystone work over there. They're running behind there. As soon as they're done, they're going to come here this month, hopefully. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Our launch at Dock was done amazingly well. It's already um, paying dividends to us. Just as an example, so far today, today is the 6th of March. We've received about 70% of our monthly revenue. And most of our tenants did sign up for the automatic payment. So it's worked out really well mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last thing I have for you gentlemen is just a throw it out there talking about the time of the Mac meeting instead of meeting at six at night would anybody be interested in meeting say around three in the afternoon on Mondays same same day just different time I, mean, I could do it I can get up. Yeah. it would be uh, it, you know why would why would we want to change everything we we, we the national championship basketball. Yeah, that's right. Games. I was thinking of you, JJ. Yeah. Yeah. Of the World Series games, yeah. we always met. Yeah. We always met. Uh, they, yeah. You know, 
Well, you see that, all that aggravation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. We're trying to get it during the regular business hours. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm hoping. To yeah, do. we already do that with the workshop. It's at two o'clock mm -hmm. for the city council. So. Mm -hmm. You think it might encourage Brian, more of the members members of the public? I'll make, I think yeah, it might whatever. actually. Yeah. We'll think, work around it. But I think it might. It'd be actually. great to have more members of the of the learning community come to these things. That yeah. would that would that would be nice. Yeah, we had one consistent, but yeah. the majority. <laughs> <of the community. laughs> but the uh, yeah. If you look at whether city council or workshops or whatever, you know. There is no public participation, yeah, yeah. so it's just, I mean, it is what it is, and we just have to uh, understand that there is a larger constituency out there that we need to stay in touch with, but they're probably not going to show up at meetings, or if they do, they'll just sit here. Uh, they'll show up if they if they get wind. If they're mad about something. If they're yeah. mad about something, that's exactly yeah. right. So and we know that from yes, we do. So that's really the update for the Marina. Things are excuse me things are going well um do do we want to change the next meeting to three we just back i have no a problem minute. with that I I we need a motion motion. Yeah. i'm good with it yeah do we need a motion for that or um i can sure. i can move that we yeah. move the next and subsequent marina advisory meetings to 3 p.m by 6 p.m on the first monday of the month okay second all those in favor aye aye, aye. Okay. Um, one more update. Uh, we are about to switch to our seven day work schedule April 1st. This is traditionally what we do. We are looking at doing a four by 10 for the marina staff, four 10 hour shifts. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One, we're going to have our field dock open much earlier and much later, which will be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, two, it'll give us more coverage actually in the marina. And then, and then three, it, it'll help boost morale amongst the marina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how do you, how do you... More hours at the marina, more staff oh, at oh. the marina, longer. And you, the same staff, just longer hours. Yeah. And you'd have more people uh, on the so we're, working for. But yeah. they're working four, four days, days a week. week. And, yeah. And so have, you have to hire more people, right? Are well, you... we're going to have our seasonals coming on. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have three seasonals to augment that as well. What I'm saying is we'll have staff at the marina from seven to six, roughly, right. versus eight to five. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a two hours more that we're going to have staff at the morning at yeah. 5.30. Yeah, yeah, you oh, gotta, yeah. and, and yeah. please, let's find the boats that show up after closing and leave before, you know, and then yeah. and then You'll just, be surprised for the first few months, probably. I, I'm amazed at how many people do that yeah, yeah, yeah. and get out without paying. That just drives yeah. me crazy. If you yeah. see a boat come in at 6.30 yeah. and leave at 6.30 a.m. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that so, makes me insane. We're, we're still at the investigation and talking about phases. We still have several weeks till the end of the month. So, but so this is this would be salary neutral, is that right? Yes, yes. Well, yeah. we're still 40 hour work. 40 summer hour, summer. hour work. And, and do, have you picked, have you hired your guys for the summer yet? We hired, uh, we're in the process of hiring one, hired the same guy that Dick all, back yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we got some more painting and field docs for him. To do, so, <laughs> he's going to do that. And then we'll, um, I think it just went out today, it's on the website for um, other seasonals as well. Hopefully he'll start off April 1st and then we'll start May um, time frame with the other two. Uh, should you get an answer here? So the the budget for employees is unchanged. Yeah, yeah, it's not changing. changing at all. It's just the schedule and how it's it's just yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a quick question about the storage units. Yes. I had, uh, are, are they in good shape? Are the roofs okay? I had somebody, um, I get involved taking stuff to a Seroptimus storage shed. Okay. And I said, why don't you have a storage shed at the Marine? It's a lot closer. And they said, oh, we looked, but it was too musty and it was, everything was wet. And the mm -hmm. roof was leaking. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to ask the question. There are a few places. Yeah. Yeah. So when we hear about leak roofs, we go up and fix them yeah. right away. We do that definitely. What happens a lot in those, they're essentially uh, two by four in plywood construction yeah. and then T111 on the ends. And then an aluminum roof. They were built as boat houses originally. You would store your boat there and you got a hoist card. So there's not a lot of bells and whistles. There's zero insulation. So there are times if the humidity is right they and sweat. if the sun hits it just right, that aluminum yeah. starts uh, it, condensating and sweating. I'll have, and sweat. I'll have in yours. You have I'll look sweat. up over top and it'll be just covered in water and it's not raining outside. Yeah. So it's not. 
Um, I did have a leak in my roof. Uh, Elise got up there yeah. and she fixed Elise it. Our it, person it, it was okay. yeah. I was just right away. Curious. So, yeah. so I don't have water pouring in when it rains, but I do get a lot of condensation. Yeah, a similar yeah. thing happens at the covered flourish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It rains under there. I know. Yeah. I was under there for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Speaking of sheds, do you want to talk about the shed auctions? Yeah, sure. So, um, it's been an exciting past three or four weeks in, in the shed industry. We had six people who had not paid and we're preparing them to go to council. Uh, in, in, in the last few days, we've had three of them pay. So we have three and we'll take three that have paid and three that we're gonna be seeking council authorization for an auction at the March 21st city council meeting. So that two of the shows. <laughs> seems kind of cumbersome. Is there a way we can get a some sort of blanket authorization where you can handle it administratively rather than going to the council for you know, the, the area yeah. and dirty laundry as yeah. far as so quite literally sometimes how delinquent are these people? Uh, I think the one that owes the most is right around eight hundred or a thousand dollars. It's so, like so ten months or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. roughly. It takes a while. What's interesting about the story share <clears throat> sheds that's different about the boats, the boats have a very distinct you have to go through city council process to auction those off. That's in the RCWs, that's in the municipal codes. The sheds in the RCWs, once they go, I believe it's six days past their payment date, you can start that process. And then it takes like 42 days to actually auction them. And you don't necessarily need, by the RCW, city council authorization to auction those sheds off. Having said that, being a city-owned marina with city-owned rentals on sheds, I think it's extremely prudent that we follow more of the boat method and get city council authorization to auction those sheds off. And it's a consent agenda item and they receive a memo in advance, so they know what's coming down, they know what's going to happen. Are the sheds locked up now? Yes. Okay, so they can't get access? No, no. So that's that's why we do that. I, I, is, I, it, is, it it rather, is it working? It works, it just takes a while. But it, it really, um, I think it really protects the city that we go through that process. So. Other than that? Okay. There's still a waiting list for sheds, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, it ultimately gives the applicant an appeal process to right. the council, which we've never had anybody take advantage mm -hmm. of, but that's one of the due process rules I think we can do rather than just making it easier and having uh, Chris just make the decision. So yeah, it just seems like it takes a long time. So. It does. It does. And well, then waiting list for the sheds. I don't remember. And then you're losing the revenue on the sheds uh, during the, during the process. We are. we are. There's on the back side of, I think it's building three or four, there's a trailer that's got the wheel locks on it. Yeah. Is it the owner put the wheel locks yeah. on that? Or yeah. is that? Yeah. We do have some of those one. wheel locks now, mm -hmm. but those are not ours. Okay. <laughs> yeah, around the back, I saw this trailer. It's got wheel locks on it. Like, you know, if you park wrong. Like a boot? Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's booted. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's booted. And so I was oh, like, wow, yeah, I yeah, wonder if this. That. Yes, we have. <laughs> because that's a nice trailer. I'm like, I'd bid yeah, on that. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. what we're doing. We had our best new sailing trailer stolen. Really? Yeah. Well, and the sea sport got stolen. Couple of years ago, the catamaran boat, mm -hmm. Ryan and Dee's boat. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was time. stolen from my five, five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's the marina update. Okay, oh, Mr. Chuck from the committee. Comments right now. Oh, I had one. The so the, the AC, I keep bringing up this ACH thing because it mm -hmm. that's the way we normally pick. And the emails that I've been getting say. Uh, mm. updates that DACWA is almost ready to do that first. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, meeting, I'm meeting with them tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll continue on what we're doing now, and it seems to work just fine. And what we'll do, what I'm hoping to do is get all of the uh, bank information from City Hall, and then we'll enter, enter it into DACWA at the office level. Yeah, because we I, I got two reminders, even though I was, yeah, my, yeah. my 
Yeah, we pay by automatic yeah. check. Yeah, 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 I got reminded. Yeah, yeah. yeah Doctor yeah. sends out a lot of emails about the bills. Ours usually but comes out, I think, on the fifteenth, yeah. but yeah. The, it's due on the first. Yeah. No, actually, your mortgage is due on the eighteenth of the month. DACWA pulls the credit card payment out on the first. It's not clear to me when they're going to do the ACH. I'm meeting with them tomorrow, and that's one of the questions I'm going to ask. Where are you at in this process? Well, I, actually, I got a little uh, an email from. Must have been from DACWA. I paid my bill the day that I got it, yeah. and and then I got a thing saying uh, you're past due as of March first. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was concerned about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're not past due. No, I know. I know. I know. I mean, so I know. <laughs> yeah, when they entered the security <laughs> deposits, really upset about that. yeah. <laughs> that stuff, so. When they entered the security deposits, they made an error in, in on some of those were charges that were backdated. So you might have been one of those, but it's been cleared up. No, you're you're not. No. I don't even know when ours comes out. I have no idea. Kevin's got some stuff. So I have stuff on. I just know what I got told. Mm -hmm. um, any advisory committee mm -hmm. comments or issues, agenda type items? Or anything? <coughs> okay. well, let's read this stuff. All right. The uh, we're going to go into the executive session, which uh, allows us to use the executive session to consider the selection of a site for the acquisition of real estate by lease or purchase when public knowledge regarding such consideration would cause the likelihood of increased price. So, um, I thought we'd turn off the... He's going to stop the recording. Looks like you have to do it through. Did it stop recording? I didn't get a single one. Did you get some kind of confirmation? <clears throat> officially, uh, we've officially concluded the executive session portion of the meeting and we are adjourned and we'll hopefully open for business again. Our next meeting is April 3rd at 3 p.m. in the